Matthews. Mike Matthews. 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 Matthews.
I feel bad because they're not remembered. I don't. <laughs> we are Screw doing them. a damn good podcast right now, <laughs> despite the fact we've had zero hours sleep. <laughs> I had, what, seven hours of sleep, which should be an adequate amount, but I was so tired this morning. I had uh, almost the same amount, and I am so tired. You just can't get up at four in the morning and not be tired. It's true. And then I have all this stuff with my fridge that's bumming me out. It It's freezing everything. But my roommate has the lower part of the fridge, mm-hmm. and his stuff is fine. So I don't know what's going it's on. It's the upper part. That's yeah. opposite of what I feel it should be. Isn't it? Like, yeah. heat rises. Yeah, but I guess, like, the... The refrigerator units are near the top, I suppose. Oh. I don't know if that's true. And Haley, I've looked online to find an answer. In fact, I even went to a video videos on YouTube. This is weird. I went, I looked it up. It said, why your f- fridge is, you know, the exact symptoms of what I'm having. And it was animated. It mm-hmm. was like these two goofy cartoon characters and their voices, all their dialogue was that when you type into one of those computer... Welcome uh, to... Yeah. yeah, yeah. Welcome to the tutorial on how to fix your fridge. So the two animated characters are like, Hello, Bob. How are you today? I am fine, Sam. How about you? I am not so good. My refrigerator is really cold in the top. I have seen videos like that. And I'm watching this. Those are pretty bad. And I looked, I scrolled down to the comments. The first comment underneath it. Hey, (laughs) (laughs) this doesn't help me at all. What would help me is if you actually showed me what to do instead of these stupid cartoon characters. Expletive. Oh, God bless you, YouTube commenters. You always know exactly what to say at the right time. My favorite thing is uh, you'll see, you know, the partial threads because it'll show you the last comment in the thread and the first one. Uh huh. So it'll be something like, wow, I really love Rush. And then uh, the third comment, or the, the last comment that they show is just like, you soviet russia hasn't existed <laughs> since 1998 and you don't know anything about how it used to be <laughs> how did it go from that to that and it's surprisingly common it's the greatest thing about youtube comments uh, that is you you've nailed it on the head there's really no well some facebook Streams get kind of weird. Like the guy that I interviewed from the Bobbleheads. Uh huh. He's gay, married. He's gay, married. Congratulations <laughs> on the gay marrying. Somehow that didn't sound right the way I said that. <laughs> Maybe I should refer to those. Married and he's gay. How do I express that he's both gay and married simultaneously? Is that right? He's married to a dude. That's right. That's what I. So, and he's like, so he's concerned about how Bernie Sanders is not. May not be electable. I don't know. I'm not God. A bunch of people say that, even though all the polls say that he's greatly electable. And then he... More br- like delectable. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was talking about how Marco Rubio is a total asshat because he can't... He was like... He said to somebody... Somebody asked him who was gay, hey, uh, I don't know. I forget what it was. Yeah, he asked about the gay law, and he was like, well, if you want to be gay, just change the law. That's what it was. And everyone was like, the law just got changed. Exactly. We can be gay. (laughs) So that whole comment stream Mm -hmm. ended up like there was somebody really conservative that jumped in there and Mm. said, you know, don't force your values on me. Yeah. And it it got crazy. Ugh. So Bernie is electable. Bernie's electable. All of the polls say that Bernie is electable. Like then I may be wrong. Bernie and Hillary may, in some states, like be close. But when you compare Bernie to all of the Republican candidates, uh, he's electable and electable and electable. Well. All right. The the worst 
case scenario is he gets in office and promptly dies. Because he's 74. Yeah. But they, they released a couple weeks ago his health records, and apparently he's in tip-top shape. That's good. Was it John Oliver that did an interview with him <laughs> back back at the, like, the beginning of the election, and he suggested that they could just do a weekend at Bernie's situation? Oh, my God. Did you see that? No. Oh, it was hilarious. Like... He he had he had um, Bernie Sanders just like hunch over, and then he put a pair of sunglasses on him. I was like, look, <laughs> it's perfect. It works fine. <laughs> I love how he likes to poke fun at himself. And then he was on a Bill Maher show almost a year ago when he first announced it, and Bill Maher sat down with him in a chair because that's what you sit down in. Hey, I'm Bill Maher. Yeah, that's how he sounds. Stupid Bill Maher. I'm Bill Maher. Hello. Welcome to the Bill Maher Show. Today we are sitting down with Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders, why do you want everyone to die? I saw her. <laughs> That's my Bernie. <laughs> That's I just it. say, I saw her. <laughs> I saw her. <laughs> this land is your land. This land is what? No. Yeah. This land was made for you and me. All right, I'm going to get really introspective now. What's that? Oh, I was... <laughs> uh. I'm just going to get really introspective and focus on my inner self. For <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, no, I'm back. So we were talking about some stuff on the Monday show that I, I was listening to and laughing and then I, I was going to bring up with you again, and now I can't remember any of it, and so that goes as it does. But do you remember any of what we talked about? I forget everything as soon as it happened. <sighs> then I was thinking, why, if I was a podcast listener, why would I listen to this podcast? And I got really down on myself. And you, you can't be like that in today's world. You have to just... But I'm down. I was like, last night... Mm. Cause my refrigerator, and then I, my whole I I hit a uh, what do you call it? I skidded down. Yeah, downhill slope. On well, a down- once your refrigerator goes out, like you lose all perception of time. It's the same thing when you lose internet. Yes, you know. That's perfectly well astute. That yeah. observation. Isolated and alone in the world. I felt that way when I couldn't make the podcast because my internet went down. Yeah. I'd get really angry and depressed, and I'd sit in a corner and... Oh, and then my vet was feeling Basil, because I took Basil into the, um, get checked up yesterday. To the vet? Yeah. And she felt his chest, and there's, like, really nothing there. And she goes, um, I feel some sort of thing. I think we need to extract some something and, and check it. And then I thought about it, and I'm like, wait a minute, he's a boxer. Boxers get growths. Yeah. And Basil's, like, over seven at this point. Yeah. And I'm like, this is going to happen. And the extraction of the thing was going to be a lot of of money. Right. So, I don't know. I felt like I'm going to wait on that. Um, Becca's dog had something like that. Becca's dog is a pit bull. Yeah. Pit bull mix, possibly? I don't know. And, like, yeah, she had some similar things, but they all turned out to be benign. Yeah. That's the thing is I'm going to pay a lot, find out it's benign. Right, and then continue on with their day, with your day with less money. Yeah, and then Basil's going to have this big freaking wound on him. So, yeah. I, th- I thought Basil looked happy. I would keep him happy. They have such short lives, boxers, anyway. Do they? I... I heard that they don't last... Some last to maybe 14. Oh. So, this, the music got sad here, didn't it? It's sad. It's the same music. <gasps> oh, it is. Mm. But... It's got a sadder, sadder undertone. It's multifunctional music. Oh, but, um... Let me show you the picture of Basil with a cat. Is this going to be the podcast picture? I think maybe it should, because I'm going out of my way to open my very, very slow iPhone. See, now it's elevator music. 
It's waiting elevator music. Oh, that's what it is. I'm trying to remember what song this is from. This is where I can find my picture. Uh, now, here it is. What do I do when I get to what it looks like that? <laughs> what? <laughs> it like organized everything into years and oh, albums. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Wow, look at this collage of your life shown in three by four pixel squares. All right, here's the picture. There's Basil seeing he's looking at the cat sitting in the chair. Do you see it? Or is it a bad picture? That cat could not give a crap. He was looking at Basil like, yeah, come on, bring it on. All right, maybe that won't be a good podcast picture. Pretty picture. It's a pretty cat. I want to pet that cat. Really? Yes. I could probably like crop it and it would be a better picture. No, it's fine. Because that's kind of funny because you see Basil's head. Yeah, and, uh, that's better. All uh, right. All right. That'll be the podcast picture. I want to thank you for Spoilers. being the creative consultant on today's podcast picture. Of course. Of course, of course, of course. All right. It's almost, it's 5.50 on that clock above your head, so maybe I should jump to uh, the news segment we were going to do called This Is Interesting. And uh, I have one story about a rabbit and one story about parking. Which one should I start with first? The rabbit. Okay. Oh, wait. I got to hit postpone on this, otherwise it's turn off. Here we go. This is interesting. Wow, this is interesting. And if you go chasing rabbits and you uh, Oh, and I played the White Rabbit by Jefferson Airplane in honor of that. Oh, is this the giant bunny? Yeah, it needs a home. Uh, my favorite headline on that was, Somebody adopt this f***ing huge rabbit! <laughs> <laughs> Where did you see that one? I saw it on Facebook. <laughs> Giant Scottish rabbit seeks home. Animal wear f- welfare officials in Scotland are seeking a new home for a giant rabbit. The larger-than-life bunny, appropriately named Atlas, is a seven-month-old continental giant rabbit. And seven months is pretty pretty long for a rabbit. Wow, I want that big freaking rabbit. It's huge. It's a large rabbit. Um, and Can you imagine feeding that rabbit? It'd be like, here rabbit, have an entire head of lettuce It would totally eat that much lettuce You can contact the Scottish Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals I think it already got adopted though Oh really? Yeah Oh good That's what I thought anyway Maybe I'm wrong I mean, look at this picture with the girl, the blonde, and and the rabbit is blending in with her hair. First off, and look, the ears are like from her from the bottom of the rabbit's head to the top of the ears. It far is high, almost as high as. The, no, yeah. it's it's bigger than from her the bottom of her neck to the top of her head. Like it's a large rabbit, guys. And it's a 1.2 meters long, which that converts to seven miles. Yeah. Right? So it's a seven mile rabbit. That's a big rabbit. That's a big rabbit. They pay for a life, put up a parking lot. All right, now parking tips. <laughs> These are tips so you can park good. Because you're going to um, drive someday. I have faith in you. Mm. Don't listen yeah, Don't listen right. to your dreams that are telling you you're going to be a bad that driver. I'm just going to crash into things. You're, yeah. you're going to be a great driver, Haley. Thanks, I think. All right. Uh, here are the most common parking lot accidents. Two drivers back up into each other. That is so true. Oh, my gosh. That's the one thing. Just remember that, Haley, when you are driving and you're backing up, there's always going to be someone trying to back up into you. <laughs> um, pulling forward out of a space into the lane of traffic. Oh, well, you're just an idiot if you get into an accident there. Look both ways, right? It's like riding a bike. 
A driver backs out of his space into an oncoming car. Oh, that was the same thing. Two cars vying for the same space collide. Okay, that's just two road rage people that are like, no, you can't have that space. I'm going to smash into you so you can't. Right. A car rear ends another at a stop sign. Yeah. Thank you, Costco, for that great article. That was amazing and interesting. Did I just throw that into my coffee? No, I think you threw it in the trash conveniently. Did I? Yeah. That never happens. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're ringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley. All right, now I'll turn that off because we're actually hearing crowd effects at this point. This is where we would usually have the Daily Haley. Is right here. Hi. Welcome to the Daily Haley. Here, I'll put the Daily Haley. The Daily Haley. The almost Daily Haley. Okay. The Daily Haley. What was that? Were you doing um, some kind of that was my uh, that was my impersonation of the the announcer guy in there? Oh, okay. If you have any suggestions for this show, like eat and die, I don't know. Whatever you have, please let us know. (laughs) Mike's Daily Podcast. (laughs) We've gotten so many suggestions recently. Like, hey, stop do this podcast. (laughs) But um, we decided that we're not going to do that one. It's our number one. <laughs> it's our number one suggestion. <laughs> Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com, which none of you use, so forget that. Oh, I did. Somebody did use it. They were trying to sell me some service. Like, if you use our service, we will get you sponsors. And I was like, frick, I don't care about you. I'm a Zimbabwean prince, and I'm stuck in space. Please send me $20,000 <laughs> so I can get out of space. $13. Uh, we made $13 off of Amazon, so we'll go have lunch. Yeah, we should do that. When? Hmm. Hmm. Maybe we should do a weekend thing. Maybe. Yep, yeah, because I get off of work at, at like 6 o'clock on the weekend. That sucks. Yeah. I'm usually working Saturday nights, and then I'm usually with Becca on Sundays. Oh, that's right. And this Sunday is Valentine's Day. Yeah. Maybe I can work late someday, and when you get off at noon, we can go and uh, have lunch then. That sounds fun. Let's think of a place to eat at. Hmm. Everybody talks about Mission Pizza. Around. Too long. Takes too long. Oh, yeah? I'm not a big fan of pizza, so like... Oh, yeah, that's gluten-infested. Well, they have gluten-free pizza there, but the wait just isn't worth it. In the my, in the my waiting opinion. is the hardest part. That's true. So. All right. We'll figure out something. You maybe can suggest it. You can go to our Tumblr. You can go to our Tumblr, Facebook page... MikeSaliaPodcast at gmail.com Tweet us your restaurant suggestions We would love to see your tweet In the Bay Area Who was the guy you were showing me all that stuff about? Uh, Oh, the actor, good looking guy Uh, Greg something Matthew Gray Gray Goobler Grayson See, that's the problem He's got a weird name that you can't remember It's Matthew Gray Goobler It's not that hard to Oh, that really is? I thought you were just coming up with words and No, Matthew Gray Gloop. I think his first name is Matthew. Anyway, he's hilarious. Watch his Cribs. Was that from Cribs? It's MTV? called My Stuff. Matthew Gray, Gray Gloobler. My Stuff. It's a little sort of documentary type thing about his house. And he's the guy from Criminal Minds. You've probably seen, seen him if you've ever watched Criminal Minds. He's the smart young kid who's tall. Um, he's and he's got gray hair. No. His hair isn't great? No, it's blonde. No, I said it's great. Oh, it's pretty great. Yeah. It's blonde and great. And and, and he directs shows. Anyway. Some of some of the Criminal Minds shows, yeah. My veterinarian mm-hmm. lady looked like a female version of him. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. Which I mean he's 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 almost pretty, so I can kind of see where she would almost be hands I don't know what I'm saying she's 
think what you're trying to say is that you're attracted to Matthew Gray Glubler. I am. And I do want to say that I understand. Okay. Yeah. Especially when he put on the kimono. He's got a bit of a meth face, not going to lie. Oh, he does! You know? Meth face. I never heard that expression before. Yeah, is but that- you've seen it. <laughs> well, I lived in Alabama for two years. I saw it all the time. Yeah, like, I'm sure that he's not on meth. Uh-huh. Like, I don't think he needs drugs to be as weird as he is. Yeah. Um, but... Got a bit of that face. I remembered him from 500 Days of Summer, which, yes, I admit, I saw that movie. And I remember him from Argo. So... That's right. Yeah. It was in Ar- he's got this very sort of... Uh, when he, his delivery is very kind of almost like he's intelligent, he is, you know. So he has this sort of intelligent, young, young intelligence, young intelligence, and intelligentism, intelligentsia. Mm-hmm. No, he he does great work in his role in Criminal Minds. I really, I really like his character, and I'm amazed he directs episodes. Yeah, that's good. Well, uh, tell us what you think about all of that at mikesdailypodcast.com or Gmail or the Gmail thing. Mm-hmm. Um, also at mikesdailypodcast.com, you can help us out through the Amazon link and buy things. Some people are doing it because we made a little bit of money. Yeah, I don't know where that came from. Some really nice person somewhere. It wasn't me. We want to thank you. I don't even think it was Becca. This is our applause to you. Yay. And all the cafe characters that followed us outside. I want to say the same thing. That's them clapping. Okay. <laughs> that was pretty much the end of the show right there. Next show, it's going to be Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player. Ding. The brewmaster. Ding. What's the ding for? It's just you naming off things. Oh, okay. And then we'll have some segment. Ding. I don't know. Maybe we won't do a segment. Ding. We'll just do I'm thinking of starting a new segment called the uh, Music Unseen. Mm. Like, because you know how we talk about stuff that just sort of bubbling under the surface or people don't know about or obscure musical stuff? Mm-hmm. We could make a segment out of that. Oh, so. You know how you were showing me that radio station that had all the indie stuff? Soma.fm? Yeah. And you showed me that the bagel radio, you said, played some really cool stuff. And I saw some stuff I recognized, and I was like, you know, it looks like a good station, but it'd be so much better if they started playing stuff like Cordy Barnett, Wolf Alice, some other stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I, I look on there a little bit later. They played Wolf Alice. Whoa! And then they played another band called Snow Mine, which I'm also a fan of. And they've been underground for years. Really? Yeah. They're they're more along the shoegaze uh, style. L- more of an indie indie rocker shoe- with some shoegaze. Well, last night I was showering at about um, 7.50 because I wanted to get to bed by 8.00. So I would have at least eight hours sleep. And then he, the the curtains were drawn back and he went, ah! And you spilled chocolate syrup down the drain. Yeah, because Psycho happened. Yeah. Did he use really chocolate syrup? Chocolate syrup, because it's black and white, you couldn't tell. I heard, too, that the there's a scene with a glass of milk. Mm-hmm. And he put a light bulb in the milk. Really? That was on. That makes um, no sense, though. How would they have that technology to, in the 60s or 50s? The walls of the Adams family were pink. The Adams well, family house. Because he gave it the right shade of gray in the black and white. Wow! Yeah. See, yeah, they had to think in that format. They had to think in black and white. And that might be why all, all the houses, when the color TV right, came around, all the houses were weird, garish colors. Whoa! Because, like, they were transferred over from black and white or something. I don't know for certain. Just saying. So I don't have the Adams Family theme in my head, but I have the... The Munsters. Uh, See, I never watched the Munsters. That seemed to be on all the time... <laughs> When I was a kid, mm-hmm. uh, reruns instead of Adam's Family. I wanted to watch Adam's Family, but instead, Stupid Monsters was on. 
Yeah. It's kind of like when you want to watch some some good old program, like maybe uh, my fa- or my mom's favorite are Bewitched or uh, I Dream a Genie, uh-huh. like those kind of, and then you turn it on and it's the Honeymooners, oh. and you're like, ah, oh, go away. We get it. You hate your wife. We get it. To the moon, Alice. To the moon. If you hate her so much, why'd you marry her? That show lasted forever. Yeah. But the interesting thing about that show is it's done completely live, and whatever mistakes they had to cover up. Yeah. Interesting. Like us. Like us. We don't make mistakes. (laughs) We are mistakes. This whole show is a mistake. Anyway. But cafe anyway. Uh, I... What was I gonna say about the... You were back... Wait, how did we get started on all that? Um... We were... Psycho. Shower. You were in the shower. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Oh, God. So I listen to Bagel Radio when I'm in the shower. Yeah, Because I I have this device called a squeeze box that Logitech used to make, which accesses the internet. Daddy never sleeps at night. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why they called it a squeeze box. I don't know. Because it's not an accordion. And it's not a Who song. Yeah, well, they probably got the name from it. Uh, from a Who song if it's designed to play music. Yeah. So I listen to that. And so in the shower, I listen to Bagel Radio. Mm-hmm. And I'm hearing this. And the, this guy comes on at night. Hey, welcome to Bagel Radio. Yeah, yeah. There's a guy that comes on and he goes, hey, we're going to play. It's called like the Fuzzy Show or Fuzzy something. He's like, we're going to play Shoegaze. We're going to play Fuzzy this, fuzzy that, all, all that, right. and I'm like, all right, Jeremy would all totally right. dig this. Yeah, I would. Do you know what kind of artist they played? No, but we can look it up. Uh, I'm sure there's a link to his show mm-hmm. somewhere. Great show, and we'll put those links in the show notes. We don't have show notes. <laughs> we won't do that. We have a blog, but I, I'm not going to write anything. I'm just going to tell you what happened today and what's going to happen tomorrow because I'm just not into it anymore. But I paid for the website. It's going to, I think the... uh, Stay strong, Mike. I think I'm going to not renew it. Stay daily, Mike. So if you want to start a podcast called Mike's Daily Podcast, (laughs) soon mikesdailypodcast.com is going to become available for you to take it. It's fine. You can do it. We won't mind. (laughs) It'll just get massively popular. Yeah! It will become so popular because he's going to have a great show. That Mike. This, this isn't a cursed name or anything. <laughs> it's it's going to be Michael Douglas. It's going to take the show. <laughs> he's going to be. Hi, I'm Michael Douglas, and I'm the guy from Ant Man. Listen. Welcome to Mike's Daily Podcast. <laughs> Here we are at Barista Anywho. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of cafe, anyway. <laughs> Barista, anywho. My show's so popular now. <laughs> All right. Thanks for being on the show today. Yeah, this was a surprise. Did you like that I suddenly uh, changed the format around and had you in from the beginning? And sound effects happened? Yeah. <laughs> and here's today's podcast picture. Oh, the podcast picture today is of the thing we were talking about earlier. Weren't you listening? It's a cat and also a dog. The, at the at the vet's... Yeah, awesome. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.